From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Friends, there is so much on our hearts today and I'm sure your hearts are filled up too with everything that has been happening around the world. And we want to begin this program by saying our condolences, our prayers, our thoughts, our love goes out to the families of those that have been affected by the synagogue uh, invasion. Oh my, oh my, I can't believe how we are facing some of the things we are in America right now. Our hearts are with you, friends. May God bless you. We're going to be dealing more with this near the end of the, the program. How God's chosen people, the Jews, we have to watch and make sure that some of these, but it's not just happening in synagogues. It's happening in churches. It's happening around the world to Christians. We'll be talking about that too, but God bless you. Our prayers are with Excellent. you, Jack. God is leading me to say something right now. I wasn't planning to say, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit for the three are one Godhead loves the Jew and so do I. Yes. Now, listen to what the Father has to say. Israel, I did not choose you because you were more in number than any other people. You were the fewest. But I chose you because I loved you. Then he uses this terms of marriage. And you know, Angels are sexless. So God the Father is sexless. So, but he still used language that all of us could understand. He said, Israel, you're the apple of my eye. Israel, you're my betrothed, my fiance. Israel, you're my wife. Israel, I'm going to give unto you an everlasting name, everlasting forever. That's how much I love you. Jesus said, salvationist of the Jews. What? Yeah. My mother was a Jewish virgin. She didn't have sex, but the Holy Spirit placed my embryo into her womb and I was born. So I'm a Jewish savior. And guess what? The, the Holy Spirit, he moved upon men when this book was written. All 66 of them. Now get ready for the shock of your life. You say, boy, I read the King James Version. I read the Doye Version of the Catholic Church. This is a Jewish Bible from cover to cover, and some of you people don't know it. You're anti-Semitic like the... I'm not going to mention the denomination. I'm going to tell you something. Every book here but one was written by Jews. 39 Old Testament Jews wrote every book in that Old Testament. In the New Testament, there were 12 apostles. 11 of them were Jews. And they wrote every word from Matthew to Revelation, except one, Luke. And he was the only Gentile, a Greek. Everything about our religion is Jewish and you are anti-Semitic. God forgive you, you'll never see the inside of heaven unless you repent. That's my opening. Right, it's absolutely right. We, but we need to love everyone, don't we? The Jewish people, we need to love them. We need to love everyone. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But God so loves yes. the Jew that oh, he, he says, when I send my son back a second time, I'm sending him to Jerusalem. Yes, absolutely. And Jesus, when he went away, said, I'm going to make a place for you. And he created the holy city. That thing is 1,500 miles wide, long, and high. Can take every human being in it because it's tremendous in space. And you know what he calls it? The holy city. <laughs> the new Jerusalem. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. You guys 
if you're going to get saved, you better start loving the Jew. <laughs> All <laughs> right, except now, the one who died for you. Well, you know, Jack, we're going to be getting into, oh, so much that I do want to share, as I said. But before we get into our headlines, I'd like for Jack, if he would, to quote out of Matthew 24, because so many signs are there. The Lord God gave this to Matthew, mm -hmm. and uh, everything that is in Matthew 24 we're seeing today. We're going to be picking out certain ones according to what we are going to be discussing today. But Jack, would you please read that, and maybe the people could read along with you? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this text is so dynamic. Rexella says a lot of people think you're making some of things up, so uh, read it to them, and they can read it with you. Matthew 24, beginning with verse 3. Oh, I love this, because it's all about the coming of Jesus. As Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they afflict you, and you shall be killed. And the hate of all nations for my name's sake, except those days be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world. And then shall Jesus come. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit has been with me. And he says, I want you to start preaching every week now. Just mentioning these two things. The imminent return of Christ to set up the kingdom because the Jack Van Impey Ministries and all my employees and all my People who work these cameras should listen. It is your ministry that is now reaching every human being on earth, 7 billion, 600 million twice a week. But there are a lot of unsaved people who will never turn on a Christian program. So I'm going to challenge you to get so much interest created from now until Christmas and put newspaper ads, everything possible, one-minute sections on television, and announce shocking subjects to get people listening so that every human being hears because you're going to be the ministry that brings in the kingdom of heaven to earth. And that's when the Father's kingdom is set up. And Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the Holy Spirit is the paraclete the blessed comforter. And it's about to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is coming in your lifetime. Tune in Christmas as I prove it. All right, Jack. We're going to be going to um, Matthew 24 that he just read to you, the beginning of that. Remember I said we'd take certain things. The first thing in there is this. Let no man deceive you. Are we being deceived today? I believe we are. I'd like you to take a look at this first picture that I have from the Midnight Call. Oh, Judas Iscariot and modern Christianity. We are being deceived through so many, many ways and even behind the pulpit sometimes. Take a look at this. America's new tune, Losing Our Religion. Oh my, oh my. A recent survey showed that there are now as many Americans who claim no religion 23%, as there are who in, in, infinitely says I am Catholic or Evangelical, the two largest affiliations. Now let me go on here just a second. This trend has been rising steadily and it's growing by 270% in the last 30 years, which means, uh-oh, next time they take the poll, America's most popular answer to what is your religious tradition will be none. Oh, in 30 years? Are you kidding? My heart is broken. Less than half of the UK Christians believe Jesus died and rose again. It's not just here in the United States. 
And then surprise, Christian churchless atheists keep pastoring. That's in Toronto at the United Church in Canada. And then, of course, Pope Francis trying to gather together uh, the Muslims and the Christians. Christians and Muslims believe in God, the Creator and Merciful One. Well, I'm sorry, Pope. It's not the same God. Their God is not Jehovah. And then, whoa, here is a cardinal, Cardinal Mueller, and he says there's such growing confusion in the Catholic Church that I'm trying to get the doctrine straight out there for everybody. And board members quit over college's drift from Christian orthodoxy. And that is a university in Southern California. Friends, do you see how we are being deceived? Even from the pulpit sometimes, even from leaders sometimes. And my heart is so burdened what I read. In 30 years from now, walking to the streets of the United States, what is your religion? I don't have any. I can't believe that that could happen to Christian America. Could you? Jack, my heart's really broken. Well, first of all, I'm going to be honest with you. We have a bunch of Catholic priests are committing every sin, but don't blame it on them alone. The consulate churches of the Methodists and Protestants, all the Protestant groups together, Almost every one of them is involved in pornography, looking at dirty pictures to get off sexually. That's what the Word of God tells us is going to happen when Jesus comes. And then we got, oh, I'm a Baptist. I've been proud of that. Now I'm not. Our Baptists now have raped 700 women, and they're keeping it quiet. The Methodists. Half of their ministers have resigned because they said they have a new rule. We must marry men to men. We can't do it because God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for that very sin, homosexuality. This is the corruption that's going on, and the God deserves to shut down the Christian church. Hmm. And it's going to happen. Tune in Christmas week and you're going to be shocked as I tell you why it's going to happen and that Jesus is about to come soon. Oh, no man can know the day and the hour. Right. Don't stop there. Quote the whole verse Jesus said. No man can know the day and the hour because if you knew the day, you still wouldn't know the hour. But he went on to say, but you will know, will know when it's near even at the door. I'm going to tell you in December for that great Christmas program, it's going to be the greatest Christmas thing you've ever heard or a gift you received. Right. We are the generation. We're going home soon to live the life. Prepare to meet Amen. your God. Amen, Jack. <clears throat> you know, friends, our opera of the week is so very important because it goes along with what we're talking about. Enemies of the cross. That's what Christianity is all about. If you don't believe in the cross and the blood of Christ cleansing us from all sin, my oh my, enemies of the cross, please take a look at the promo that we have for you right now. The Apostle Paul, who slaughtered hundreds of Christians before his conversion to Christ, was forgiven and chosen to expose the enemies of the cross of Christ. Today, 132 nations proclaim their hatred for Christianity. Who are these ungodly enemies? Atheists, New Agers, cultists, Christian defectors, and Muslims. On billboards, atheists call our Lord a useless savior. New Agers state through Dr. Shookman's course on miracles, promoted on Oprah Winfrey show, that a slain Christ has no meaning, so do not make the pathetic air of clinging to the old rugged cross. Worse yet, Bible translators created a new version for Muslims eliminating Christ as the Son of God 91 times. By doing this, they've destroyed Christianity's message. This act denying that Jesus is the Son of God identifies these three translation groups as enemies of the cross of Christ and Antichrist 1 John 2.22. Why did they do it? Since Muslim invaders entered Jerusalem in 637, they did away with all crosses. That's the way it's been ever since. 
these 21st century enemies of the cross recently promoted ads on Australian television saying, move over Jesus for a new savior. For a complete study and expose on all these groups, order Enemies of the Cross. Oh, friends, make the call or write to us right away. Who is calling the cross useless? Don't let your family, your church, be deceived. It's all explained on here. So make the call right away. Now, friends, another, oh, I couldn't believe picking up this headline because it has to do with China. And, you know, China is really putting their fist up to our president and saying, we'll do what we want to do. Well, here we go, U.S. Ambassador Brown back. China is at war with faith. Oh, my, oh, my. Take a look at what's happening. Major Chinese city offers bounty on Christian leaders. They're seeking them. They're saying we we'll give you about $1,500 for information leading to it. To kill them. Yes. And then uh, synthesizing religion, a sweeping campaign against house churches. House churches in China is sending leaders to prison and forcing many faithful Christians underground. They're finding them no matter where they are. Well, Jesus as Son of God, another religion that's uh, really persecuting the Christian Muslims now claim Christian beliefs mock Islam. Oh, come on. Another Muslim warns Christian belief offends him. Well, another Muslim warns him? Oh, you know, friends, I just want to analyze something here. What do the communists believe? They don't have a faith. They're, they're faithless. And then, of course, I'm going to ask Jack just in a moment, why do they hate Christians so much? And then the Muslims hate Christians so much. Oh, Jack, my heart, for the Christians around the world, they're going to receive a special reward from heaven because of being martyred, that crown of martyrdom. Right, Jack? Oh, yes. But let me tell you something right now. In this text I had you read, it says, you shall be hated of all nations. Jesus said, for my name's right. sake, hate the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to speak up. There are a lot of good Muslim people, but there are 57 of their denominations totaling over 2 billion membership. And they got eight verses in the Quran, eight. Let's say, if you believe that Jesus Christ is God, you will burn in hell forever. God, forgive them. I've been under 14 death threats in the past, and I will lay down my life if I have to, but I'm going to tell the world about Islam. Now, what is Sharia law, the law of Islam? We got Ten Commandments, and they're wonderful. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. But let's look at the four of Islam. You shall kill your daughter if she has premarital sex. You shall kill every homosexual. You shall kill every one of our own people if they say one word against Allah or Muhammad. And that's 57 denominations about Two billion in their mosques. Kill them, our own. And the last point is, they say, kill everyone that is not a Muslim because of what they believe about Jesus. As I said before, I repeat, they say anyone has eight times in the Quran in 57 different denominations who believes that Jesus is the Son of God will burn in hell forever, so kill them. Now, wait a minute. Revelation 20 and 8. The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable. Now, you know who that is? The Muslims. It says the fearful, unbelieving, abominable, whoremongers, murderers, sorcerers. That's the crowd that's on drugs, alcohol, marijuana, sorcerers, from the Greek word phatomachia, pharmacy. He says liars along with all those who kill, mm. are in hell forever. You say they're going to burn from hell because they love Jesus. You're going to burn in hell because you hate everybody. Get mad at me. I'll preach this book as long as I live. And then I'll get the martyr's crown 
Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, Jack, there's just so much that we want to share with our friends about facts that are happening around the world. And something that happened right here in the United States just shocked me. And I don't know if you've seen this or not, but take a look at what happened. And this happened in Buffalo, New York. School children dressed as Muslims during Hijab Day. Now that's uh, a Muslim day around the world. And they have asked these children to put the head garb on. Buffalo, New York, the top one. The one on the bottom is Vernon, Illinois. Uh, and the one on the other one is Peoria, Illinois. My oh my, they say we're taking over. We'll start with the young people. Train up a child, and that's the way he'll go. Oh, my, I can't believe that happened. Well, not only are we being threatened in that type of thing, but I did show you this World Watch List where it's dangerous to follow Jesus in about 50 countries. Take a look at the countries. There they are. And, of course, oh, I could name them all for you. Oh, it's terrible, the extremism. And now, you know, North Korea is on there, as I mentioned, Yemen, Iran, and even India. Couldn't get over that one. Egypt. Uh, then Nigerian Muslim militants kill, can you believe it, 120 Christians in just three weeks? That's in Nigeria alone. Nigeria Archbishop urges protection for Christians as Islamic violence soars. It's around the world, friends, and we need to be praying for all of our Christian brothers and sisters. Well... Here we are again, the discrimination against Christians and Jews. Let's get back to them also. What's just happened to them? Of course, the rabbi came face to face with their murderer in San Diego. Oh, they have to grapple with this, the synagogue shooting there. My heart goes out to them being praying for our Jewish friends. And then the synagogue survivors tell of terror. Well, there they are remembering those whose lives were taken, uh, that life that was taken there, the, the woman. One third of Americans don't believe. What? One third of Americans don't believe six million Jews were murdered? Sorry, you got oh. a third of our Americans, you're dummies. During the Holocaust? <laughs> okay, Khomeini, of course, that's the supreme leader of Iran's uh, Muslim uh, group. Uh, normalizing relations with Israel against the Quran. Oh, my, how wrong that is. And then French man stabs neighbor just because he wanted to kill a Jew. It's around the world, friends, Christians and Jews. We need to be praying for our brothers around the world and for our Jewish friends. Jack? As I come to a conclusion here, I already told you how much the Father, Son, Holy Spirit love the Jew, and so do I. Now... Jesus, when he left, said, I'm going to go away, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he's been working on it for 2,000 years, and I already mentioned this once in the program. It's 1,500 miles long, wide, and high. It can take care of every human being that's going to live on earth at that time. And the name of it is Pain of the Cross, according to Revelation 21 2. The holy city, the new Jerusalem. God loves the Jews so much, he's going to set the world headquarters up in Jerusalem. Now I'm going to open my heart to you. My father left the Catholic Church, became bitter. Taught me to become bitter. But you know, a man came into power by the name of Pope John Paul and then Pope Benedict. And I renewed my love for Catholic brothers and sisters. I love you. Because you believe the five points of fundamentalism, the deity of Christ, virgin birth, blood atonement, bodily resurrection, and Christ's return. Now, the trouble is, with these two great popes, we now have one that's an apostate, Pope Francis. He says, all atheists can go to heaven. My Bible says no unbeliever gets sight into heaven, especially if he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. And secondly, he says, I do not believe in hell. Calling God a liar 211 times. That's the present pope. The Bible says that would be the one who turns against Christ when the Catholic Church goes down. That's why the Catholic Church people are leaving with flocks. It's going to happen in the Protestant churches too because the new kingdom of God is going to be set up on earth. Amen. 
You know, Jake, that brings me back to the very first point we started this program with. Let no man deceive you. Believe the Bible. The Bible says that Jesus is the only way to heaven. You can't get there any other way. Will you open your heart to him? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, Jesus said. Will you ask Jesus to be your Savior right now as Jack prays this wonderful prayer? Jack. Oh, precious Jesus, thank you for Calvary and the suffering you did to wash away all of our sins. Thank you, Jesus. Pray this, will you? Lord, I want you as my Savior today. I believe what this Bible says about you, Jesus, the Savior of the world. I receive what you did for me at the cross. Come into my heart now. I accept you. You're my Savior. Amen, amen. How wonderful to become a child of God. Don't be deceived. Don't let anybody take away your faith. Don't let anybody say that you're wrong when you base your faith on the Bible. And so I want to say congratulations. First steps in a new direction, I'll send you because you just accepted the Lord. You're going to be walking with him through this life. God bless you. Let me know about it. Write to me. I'll send this to you absolutely free. Our mailing address is Jack Benibby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive this wonderful offer of the week, Enemies of the Cross. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you, Chuck, and I do want to encourage you to be sure and get this wonderful offer because it will help you as you explain to others what's going on in this world, enemies of the cross. Write for it or call right away. You know, uh, I'll tell you, sometimes we say, oh my, how much time do I have left? Well, we may need to make the most out of every day of our lives, don't we? Something better than counting your years, of course, is making all your years count. We need to be doing something for the Lord, walking with the Lord, showing others the real way, and enjoying our walk with the Lord, enjoying life. Because that's why Jesus came, that you might have life, and you might have it more abundantly. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.